Hello friends, this is Andrea Thea John with the Silky Malty Puppies channel. So glad to have you back. And if this is your first time, please take a moment and consider subscribing to this channel, liking, commenting on this video, just so we know that you are here. Always good to see who's coming through. And if you're again new to the channel, what we do here is talk about Silky Malty Puppies, the whole small dog labor delivery, newborn puppy experience. What is that like? So Silky Maltese, are a mix between Silky Terrier and Maltese. So we have a purebred Silky Terrier and a purebred Maltese coming together to make Silky Maltese, which we think are so fun. It's like malty, kind of like a malt milkshake. Describes them so perfectly. So <laughs> we hope you enjoy this experience. It's our first litter. And in our very first video, we a bit touched on why that is such a touchy subject for so many people, particularly in America why that's a touchy subject of having puppies in general, not spaying, not neutering, all that kind of stuff. So if you're looking for that, it's on video one. You can check it out there. We discussed a good bit of that there in the beginning of that video. In this video, we're talking about the entire whelping process, labor and delivery, which the breeding world calls whelping, W-H-E-L-P-I-N-G, if that's a new term for you. And so we'll talk about what that was really like. And I'm assuming if you're here that you have a toy breed or a small dog who may be pregnant or you're thinking about potentially breeding a dog yourself, but you're considering what all could go into that. What is it like? What do you really need to be prepared for? And that's the kind of stuff that I was really interested in and really couldn't find a lot of that info, particularly for small breeds. Not a lot of info out there. So. That's why this channel exists and that's why this video exists. So I want to share all these great tips with you that I learned along the way and figured out along the way and hopefully it helps you in your process. If you're just curious about how this all happened for our dog Millie, say no more. I shall give you all the details. All right, let's go. Okay, so in the previous video, we talked about whelping area prep, which we will not cover in this video. So if you wanna learn about whelping area prep, what we did to create and make an area special and what she needed, what our dog needed uh, to have a successful whelping, i.e. labor and delivery experience, check that out in video one. But basically it involved quickly whipping up and renovating, lightly renovating a little space in our area kitchen area uh, that we were not using at the time because we have a lot of renovation projects going on. So I talk a lot about the prep for that and everything. So today I'm going to tell you about like what that actual process was like. I actually was prepping her whelping area when she started whelping. <laughs> so let me paint the picture for you. I was home alone. My husband decided we had just come back from Barcelona for my honeymoon, our delayed honeymoon, i.e. anniversary trip. And we'd just come back and then he decided to turn around and do a trip to New Orleans because he'd been dying, dying about getting to New Orleans for family stuff. And he was trying to time it up so that it wouldn't correlate with Millie's whelping. So this was the weekend he picked and it was the weekend of October 29th. So I was home alone. I decided to do some of these renovation projects myself just to get Millie's area ready. And as I was getting her area ready, which involved like painting and putting down little sticker tiles and that kind of thing, again, a little light renovation process. As I was doing that, I noticed some signs. Okay, clue number one, I walked Millie as she was pregnant just because everything said it was good for her to still have exercise light gentle exercise and those days leading towards the end of her gestation cycle 
it was really slow going. I felt like I was walking a senior dog. So we were very gentle with her, just took our little time. I was just inching down the road with her, but she still loved getting outside. So I still took her on her little walks and they just got shorter and longer to, you know, get down the road and turn a corner and come back is basically what we were doing at that point. But she was really waddling. You could tell, I mean, she had five puppies and she's a little bitty thing. So she was carrying a lot for her frame. Hey, Millie, you want to say hi? You want to say hi to people? Hold on. Oh. Her eyes a little crusty. This is Millie. Oops. This is Millie. <laughs> say hey, girl. She's so she's got all kind of energy right now. Millie. She's still got like some milk you can see down here. So she's still lactating a bit. Okay. Okay. Oh, you got <laughs> necklace, girl. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So, Millie, Millie. She can't sit. She can't sit still. Ah. Fluffy, no. So this is freaking frag. This is Vanilli, the dad, who's the Maltese. So he's a lot more amenable on camera, apparently. Hello. <laughs> he called me. He turned. You're in my necklace too. No. This necklace is not good for anyone. This is Vanilli, aka Fluffy. He totally needs a little haircut right now, but he is fluffy as ever. Hence his name, Fluffy, but his official name is Vanilli. And Millie is walking all over my papers right now. So, hey, you met the parents. All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, okay. I hope they're quiet while I'm filming, but this will be a new experience. Okay. So, walking was a lot slower. She was also refusing food. So, she had been a pretty picky eater, yet always a bit ravenous eating small little meals all throughout the day and just needing water because you know she's feeding all these puppies so i i free fed her whatever she needed whatever it seemed she needed that's what i was giving her but that morning she ate nothing even and i was used to her being picky so I, it was nothing for me to just keep offering her different things just to see what would work for her that day and so i just was offering her all her favorites all her favorites you know she kind of gotten over the hot chicken and rice with puppy kibble mix which was working for a minute but now it wasn't she um sometimes would do like a puppy shake as i call it so it was a puppy kibble mix and this is puppy kibble because we're transitioning her because puppy kibble is higher in nutrition and higher in calories and it's better for mom and better for puppies during this whole process so mom and puppies eat the same thing okay guys <laughs> just walking all around right now so mom and puppies were eating the same thing. So a puppy shake was like puppy kibble mixed with some peanut butter mixed with hot water and I'd throw in her multivitamin in there and that kind of thing. There's a fenugreek herb that is supposed to help with lactation and all that kind of stuff and producing milk. So things like that I would throw in there sometimes. And, and that was even after she'd had the newborns when she wasn't eating her just regular boring dry kibble. <laughs> so all that stuff I tried offering her slices of turkey meat, slices of even scrambled eggs. Sometimes I make omelets for her. She was not having any of it that morning. So I was like, okay, girl, maybe I'll figure out something you want later. It was kind of what I was thinking. So refusing food, number one sign, panting. And she's not a panter. This is a very athletic dog. She's very athletic. So she's not, even in the summer when it's very hot and she's been working and running and all that, she's very rarely going to be a panter. Fluffy, on the other hand, sits in pants. <laughs> so he looks like a little happy dog all the time because his, his tongue's always out. But Millie is like, she's stoic. She's like, oh, you're tired? <laughs> oh, you're tired? <laughs> but she was panting and I was like, oh, that's serious because she again doesn't do that so panting another sign another sign was restlessness so just not being able to get comfortable you know she was just up and down the stairs she was under the bed like digging in the carpet and all this like just restless just stuff like that it was weird so restless discharge even in the days prior like one or two days prior i noticed when she was peeing outside she had like kind of it was gooey pee right that's vaginal discharge but that had happened a little bit before and so I just knew like some of that is just being pregnant right but it had picked up a little bit 
And so that made me a little, also a little on alert, like, okay, that's picking up. Noted. Dilated eyes. Dilated eyes. It's a little hard to tell on Millie because she's got very dark eyes in this house. It's a little dim, but she definitely, her pupils were telling me a story. Like they were just like she's in a little bit in distress feeling. So I noticed that. Just looked very concerned in her eyes. Like she really needed my attention is how I felt. She was like, stick around me because I need you. That's what I felt when I looked at her. Also nesting behavior. So she was going, again, going up under, <laughs> our bedroom for whatever reason has been like her safe haven. Our bedroom and my, this office underneath this chaise over here, she like, that's one of her hiding places. So she'll go under there. Can you guys hear that? Those little puppies. Somebody's whining. I will get them in a minute. All right, so nesting behavior. She was going to her safe space and like trying to, I think she wanted to have the puppies in our bedroom because that felt safe to her, but that was a no-go. We were not housing puppies in our bedroom with poop and pee and all that not happening, not going down to the bedroom. So put a quick end to that. All right, now I gotta get these puppies one moment. Okay, never a dull moment, had to go deal with the puppies. Mama is feeding them right now, so they're in a mix of weaning at the moment. So sometimes she feeds them a little bit, but she's getting very tired of that because their teeth are starting to come in, starting to feel a little painful on her nipples. So she's like, eh, I can really take, but like so much of this. So in a minute, I'll let her back out and we'll feed them their puppy mush. <laughs> it's their little mix of, it's like a puppy smoothie as I call it. I don't know why people call it mush. Puppy smoothie, so much cooler. So <laughs> they'll get that next and they're drinking water, which is so, so cool. So they just turned six weeks, just had their um, six week first visit to the vet. They're cool, they're cool. Everybody was super healthy. And she even was like, their coats are so glossy. Like she loved their coats. They were just, she's like, they just look so healthy. And so I love that, such a great sign. All right, so we talked about nesting behavior, just trying to find that safe place to have puppies. But again, I already picked her place where she needed to have those puppies, so we were gonna make sure she had it there. The issue was I was trying to make this stuff perfect, so, because <laughs> that's what I do. And her conception date was the, I wanna say it was the end of August, 1st of September, I wanna say, somewhere around there. And uh, cause it was the day I was coming back from our fall retreat thing that we had to do. And my hubby was the one watching them. All this is in the first video. So I will spare you from rehashing that story. If you want to hear that story of how this all really happened and why we even chose to have puppies in the first place. Cause that's a very charged conversation. People feel very strongly about all that. So if you want to hear that, it's in the first video as well. So I'll spare you that detail. However, her due date was supposed to be November 4th. And so by the time we were able to get ready for her whelping and all of that, we would have had a week-ish, about a week and a half before her actual due date. So I'm up here the weekend before, November 4th, which was the weekend after. I'm up here like a week before prepping her area, thinking I'm in good time. And meanwhile, all these signals are happening. <laughs> and I'm like, even with the signals, so many articles and people and breeders and experts say, when these signals start happening, you still have potentially 12 to 24 hours before an actual whelping experience starts occurring. But not true, not true for our puppies. So, <laughs> so all this started happening that morning-ish. I, I wanna say I started really noticing it. You know, her refusing food started right off the bat in the morning, but these extra signs, I didn't really start noticing until about one o'clock that day. These other signs that were here especially the telltale this is definitely happening which is contractions mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this baby was starting to have contractions and I was like oh uh, you know and I told you my husband was not here because he went on this actually no what he was at a conference actually he wasn't in New Orleans yet that was another trip way too many trips going on way too many trips going on 
but he was at a conference at that time and I tried to call him. He wasn't picking up his phone. Typical. And so I left him all these messages like, these babies are coming. Get your behind here. <laughs> yeah. So if you don't want to miss it, otherwise it's going to be me and the babies. It's going to be me and the babies holding it down. So I tried to reach him. He ended up making it just in time for the last puppy. So I'm skipping a lot. Let me get you through the details. <laughs> So the other piece was begging for attention. I'll get back to contractions, but begging for attention, just really pleading, looking like she needed me, needed my attention. Anytime I'd walked away at all, a couple feet out of her sight, yeah, it was not her cup of tea. She was like, stay your little self here, ma'am, because I need you because something's about to go down. <laughs> so. <laughs> I was like, okay, I was like, you know, I was really thinking 12 to 24 hours. So I was like, okay, they're coming, but we still got time. So I'm up here still trying to, now I'm like kicking my renovation into high gear. Cause I'm like, oh gosh, this is, we got to knock this out way faster than I thought. I thought I had at least a whole weekend plus a week before all this happened. And so now I'm speeding it all up. Like this could potentially happen within at least a minimum of 12 hours. So, but still I thought we had time, right? So she's looking very like she needs attention. I got sticky floor stuff on my hands. <laughs> you know, I just finished painting the bay windows and all this again in the other video. You know, I'm paint, I'm petting her with the back of my hand, like, you're fine, you're fine. It's gonna be okay, you know, because I got sticky crap on the front of my hands. <sighs> so, begging for attention, that was another thing. The contractions are unmistakable. I kind of wondered to myself because I, I mean, I'm not a mother, I'm not a human oh my mother <laughs> myself. So I've never personally had kids. My sisters have had kids, people all around me have had kids, but I've never personally had kids. So do I know what a contraction feels like? No. Could I potentially even imagine based on what I know from everyone else? Slightly. A bit. And it seems like something you wouldn't want to wish on anyone. <laughs> but her contractions were unmistakable. Basically, and I'll show you a little bit on camera here, the little bit I was able to catch when I was able to catch it. It's basically a tensing up. Her whole her whole stomach tensed up and you could feel her muscles just contracting so hard. It's just super tense. It's very hard. It's strong. You can feel it um, mm. right on the outside. So it's unmistakable. Okay. If you've ever wondered if you're a guy or a chick like me who's never dealt with it from a human standpoint or let alone a dog, it's unmistakable. And so um, in addition to her belly tightening up like that she would straighten up her legs real real stiff like this and it'd be so hard and she'd be she'd just be crossing them so hard in her stomach with tits and she'd do this but no no howling no crying no noise at all that indicates she was in pain just quiet quietly tensing up the whole thing was quiet no noises from her yeah that was interesting so <laughs> i was i was like is this gonna be like howling at the moon kind of sounds i don't know none of that happened none of that happened just a lot of tensing up and she crossed her legs real tight like this like like that okay can you tell how that was okay i'll also show you pictures because the pictures do it way better <laughs> i hope you laughed at me when i did that because i was laughing at myself just now <laughs> Okay, the other sign that you're supposed to have is a temperature drop in mom. And so by the time all this happened, her temperature probably dropped hours ago and I just didn't know. And also my whelping kit hadn't arrived because it was set to arrive the next day, which still should have been in plenty of time if she had been, you know, had the puppies on the due date. We thought she was going to have them. Oh, hold on. I got to go save Millie from the puppies. Hold on. Hey, Okay, I have saved Millie from the puppies because she can only, again, I told you, she can only handle them so long now. And I am bonus a puppy. This is Venti. Venti, he's so precious. He's so precious. Venti used to be our biggest puppy, which is why he was called Venti. They're all coffee named. <laughs> so sweet. And he is no longer the biggest puppy. He's almost the biggest puppy. 
He is 2.8 pounds now and his brother Espresso is the biggest at 3 pounds. You hear other puppy sounds in here. That's Fluffy, his dad, watching because he loves playing with Venti. Venti always likes to escape, i.e. he stares at me with puppy eyes and I rescue him from his brothers and sisters because he just likes hanging out with us better. And so he'll stand up on the wall like, take me out of here. And I go get him, I get him, and then Fluffy plays with him. So that's what they do. So I have him for now. When he gets tired of being up here, I'll put him down and Fluffy will play with him and they'll have a good little time and hopefully it's not too loud for you, but such is the puppy life. All right, so I told you about the contractions and how serious that was. Um, oh yeah, temperature drop. Couldn't tell because our kit with the temperature, with the thermometer hadn't shown up. And I mean, I did at a, in a pinch, could I've used a thermometer, like a human thermometer, probably, but I mean, at this point, we already knew what was going down, so that is what it was. Okay, okay, sweetie, you ready to get down? You ready to get down? You want to play? Tell them bye. Tell them bye. Bye-bye, cuties. Bye-bye. All right, here you go. <laughs> All right, so all these signs were happening. Again, I still thought I had a little time, at least 12 hours wrong so i'm up here putting down these little vinyl stickers on the floor uh -huh. guys fluffy Shh. i'm up here putting these little vinyl stickers on the floor because you know this was a light renovation just for the puppies and the real renovation is happening later i just wanted it cute for pictures and to be clean enough and all that kind of stuff so stickers not a bad effort again in the other video all that stuff so I just finished putting down all these stickers, which is an incredibly sticky process. I mean, your hands are super sticky. Very easy to do, pretty relatively easy, but your hands are sticky as all get out. So, I mean, you really gotta like clean that very good. So, hey cutie. <laughs> he's wandering around my office. I'm just making sure he's not like pooping or something. <laughs> oh, you're biting my cord. That's no good. So the flooring had just gotten finished enough. I had put down enough tiles as that what I had. I ended up having to buy more and more and more just to finish up one side. And I still got to do the other side of the kitchen just so it doesn't look crazy. Now it looks crazy with fresh new flooring on one side and old flooring on the other side of the kitchen. So I will do it. I will get it done. But in the meantime, it's great for the puppies. And I just finished that last bit of flooring and we had gotten this puppy kind of kitty pool, plastic foldable kitty pool uh, for her to have her whelping experience in and some whelping pads. And I just set that up on the new flooring and I was gonna go put Millie in it, just place her in to see what, you know, just to introduce her to the space. That's them running around. Introduce her to the space, make sure she liked it, got her comfortable with it. As soon as I picked her up and put her in the pool, Fluffy, stop being so loud, honey. He's just running around chasing the little puppy. <laughs> That's what they do. Okay, so as soon as I placed her in that little pool, puppy bubbles, as I call them, were coming out. Puppy bubbles. And the bubbles are those amniotic sacs, which they are surprisingly dry. I mean, they were dry, right, smooth to the touch. You expect it to be like sticky, nasty, like human birth, completely dry little bubbles coming out. And two are kind of coming out at once. When I'll show you what I can on this video, um, two are kind of coming out at once. And I was like, whoa, that's unexpected. So now I'm a little slightly freaking out because I'm like, oh crap, hubby's not here to help me. He's not, you know, he would at least spend an extra pair of hands to help and run around and get stuff as I watched her. Wasn't there to help me. My whelping kit wasn't there because it was coming the next day in the mail. A lot of good that was doing me today when this was happening and so I'm like right in my head I'm, re I'm remembering the list that was in that whelping kit and what do I really need to get this done <sighs> puppy sacks she had two little puppy sacks coming out one was who would become nitro the next was this guy right here venti who was vying to come out at the same time <laughs> so again the sacks were incredibly clean smooth dry not gushy messy at all you have to actually break the sack mom has to break it or you have to break it she's not you know doing it yet and she's a first-time mom so you know I'm waiting 
patiently as I've learned you should do with mama dogs just based on what other people have shared so I waited for her to naturally do her thing she kind of you know the first puppy she kind of wasn't into that rhythm yet but after puppy number one she was a super pro so after that if you are in the situation okay. where your dog is oh my gosh, pregnant is. and in labor whelping try to let them do what they do best in nature because God designed things the way he did for a reason sorry to throw religion in there for non-religious people or non-Christian people or anything but whoever you call God the universe whatever it is all designed for a reason so the jaggedness of their teeth how it's not super blunt and sharp like super razor sharp scissors that's on purpose so that it helps stop the bleeding so it's not a super sharp cut and the bleeding stops earlier and that all helps with the umbilical cord but mom mama dog eats all that up herself so um oh i was telling you before i was so really interrupt interrupted that my uh, father who was a forest ranger for a long time the u.s forest service and now teaches agriculture at Tuskegee university uh, you know country guy country roots forestry all that he when i told him our dog was pregnant and i was taking her to get her ultrasound and x-ray and all this kind of stuff he was like I know he was kind of, his head was sort of swimming on that one, and he was like, well, dang, you know, back in our day, we didn't even know dogs were pregnant. They just went under the, went under the porch and came out with puppies, <laughs> which, to be fair, this is how they're designed. They're designed to be fairly self-sufficient. The only thing, the only thing that comes into play here is when you care about the livelihood of the puppies and you actually care about them and you want them to make it and live and it matters to you that they do this is why all this involvement of veterinarians is in place and especially with small dogs toy breeds the one issue you can run into there is potential c-sections so if this is why the x-rays are so important if those skulls are a little too big for that pelvic opening obviously she's there's no amount of pushing she can do to get those babies through it. So a C-section becomes life-threatening, mandatory for mom and pups to live and survive. So if you care about mom, you care about pups, gotta have an emergency vet on standby just in case you notice a C-section is needed. Thankfully, thankfully, none of that was needed for Millie and her pups. The x-ray looked like, you know, skull size was fine compared to pelvic ratio and all that kind of stuff. And we knew we expect we were expecting five puppies so this is another thing as those amniotic sacs are coming out and the placenta is coming out the afterbirth as some people call it is coming out afterwards you get a sac and a placenta or afterbirth for each puppy so the sac comes out it gets broken mom eats all that up because in nature she's getting rid of the evidence she's trying to keep her environment where she's actually doing her well-being, i.e. labor and delivery, as clean and smell-free as possible. Why? Because of predators. So in the wild, if she were in the wild, <laughs> if she were in the wild having these puppies, she does not want to alert Big Bad Wolf and any other predator out there bigger than her that sees her little puppies and potentially her as a yummy snack she does not want to alert them that a weak mother and vulnerable puppies are nearby so she is getting rid of that evidence she is clearing that up what's up little puppy you good he might be tuckering himself out but he's got a lot of energy so he will just keep going and going and going what's up millie yeah so she is trying to get rid of that evidence which is why in nature and and in real life as you'll see if this ever happens to you she's gonna eat all that stuff up herself she eats it and the same thing happens with puppy waste later on urine feces all of it pee and poop she eats it because why because it's evidence so <laughs> she does not want any predator anywhere near around her and her baby so you gotta do what you gotta do to survive, right? And so they're designed to handle it. So she does, she does. I have heard someone say when they knew that we were having puppies that 
we shouldn't let the mama dog eat the placentas because it gives her diarrhea later. And I kind of feel like she might just have diarrhea in general anyway for a little bit because of the labor and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, nature designed that way for a reason. Let it ride. She'll get over it. Her poop went back to normal. It's all fine. You know, so talk about enough poop stuff some other day. <laughs> okay, so amniotic sacs came out fine. Rewind. As I saw those first two sacs trying to come out at the same time, I was doing that checklist in my head like, what do we need? What do we need? What do we need? What was in that kit that I could potentially find a substitute for here in this house? And I was running around this place like a little banshee with his head cut off, but focused at the same time. I'm like, I gotta get it, get it, get it, get it. I was doing my list, checklist in my head. So, aspirator that little suction thing that we use on babies human babies I was trying to find one of those and I knew I'd seen one in this house before so I went and found that thankfully I remembered somehow my brain remembered where the heck that thing was because we would never otherwise use it <laughs> so aspirator found that little blunt scissors found some of those just in case I needed I only had to do that one time cut an umbilical cord for her and I just pinched it off and held it. Those whelping kits come with little clamps. Did I feel I needed those? I don't think you need them. And I also, I think for toy breeds, I feel like they're too big. They were like this long. It's kind of big for a little tiny puppy that's like, how many ounces were they? They were so little. They were like barely four ounces or something when they were born, so tiny. So those big old clips, I feel like they would have like weighed their stomach down. <laughs> they're so long, they were like this big. If you, pinch the umbilical cord you know for 15 seconds or more and just keep holding it with pressure it will eventually stop bleeding and then you just leave it like that and then what happens over the couple days is that little umbilical cord shrivels down to like the thinnest piece of thread and it's just it's hanging off of them and eventually it falls off or mama licks it off or something happens to it it's nothing you have to deal with so umbilical cord completely fine the one thing I will say be careful of is watch if your mama dog seems ultra aggressive when she's taking care of business as nature intended. If she seems ultra aggressive and she is like gobbling up those umbilical cords and placentas very aggressively, you might want to step in and help protect that baby a little bit because while she's doing her job, I've seen some incidences where the and I'm sorry if this grosses you guys out, but I don't think you would have made it this far if this stuff grosses you out. <laughs> this is very important if you have a pregnant dog. So I've seen some very unfortunate incidences where intestines had been pulled out through the umbilical cord because mom had ripped too hard and now you got a baby with organs falling out of their body and people are trying to call their vet and the vet's like, there's nothing we can do, la 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 just be careful make sure mom and dog's not being too aggressive and if she is you're going to want to step in and help as best you can you know your dog as best you can protect your baby's puppies protect her puppies from her because she's on a mission and i'm sure if this were a huge litter of 10 11 plus puppies i mean that's a massive amount she's on workhorse mode so she it makes sense if she's trying to rip through it all but she might mess up and rip through a stomach and that's not what we need so thankfully we didn't have that problem Millie was nice and careful we were all nice and careful all the puppies prayerfully were fine so okay go back to this process oh yeah everything we needed so definitely lots of towels old towels old clean towels thankfully I had those nearby because that was part of getting the whelping area ready I wanted that basket of old towels and old rags there but clean so that we could use them as needed. So that was nearby. Clorox wipes, had them nearby. What else did we have? A notebook to write down weights, the date of birth in case this went past midnight, <laughs> you know, it's a different date. The time of birth, how much they weighed, a scale to weigh them with. So a little kitchen scale worked for us for a little toy breed. A little kitchen scale works great because they're just a matter of ounces anyway when they're born so it's perfect some people say some unwaxed dental floss can be helpful if you need to tie off an umbilical cord again 
I had some, I found that in house, but didn't need it because you just pinch it off and hold it. it. Stops the bleeding, it stops after a while. So totally fine. Final thing is a heat lamp. Thankfully, that was one of the things that it had arrived a bit earlier. So I did have a heat lamp there. It's just a matter of screwing in the bulb and I put that in and I wanted that available because, hey Millie, they're just in and out of here. I wanted that available in case, you know, as puppies were coming out and mom is busy giving birth and feeding and all this, sometimes they might just wander away or something and they need a heat lamp because puppies cannot regulate their own temperature for several weeks, at least two, three weeks. So you're gonna need a heat lamp. I still have two heat lamps running. They're on lower temperatures right now, but I just keep them on because it's the winter. I don't ever want them getting cold. So cold puppies are no good for anybody. So heat lamp, that was everything on my list. We were ready to go. So as puppies were coming out, that first sack, I helped her break that sack because that puppy was just sitting in there and nothing was going, she wasn't doing anything with it. And I was like, mm, let's just open it. <laughs> so just very carefully, you know, just opening it like delicate saran wrap, but it's a little thicker than that. And then the contents come out. She didn't take care of the contents with that first puppy and I kind of waited to see if she would do anything with that and she didn't so I ended up sticking it in a plastic grocery bag and calling it a day I was like that's going in the garbage <laughs> goodbye <laughs> so she need that first one the other one she did eat totally fine so we got rid of that placenta and all that rub the baby off so just rubbing it around gently and wiping it dry as dry as possible and you know just getting a little gunk off of it and also just trying to make sure it cries trying to make sure its lungs and its lungs are clear to breathe so that's what the little aspirator was for very rarely do I have to use the aspirator I use it a couple times I just mainly wanted to hear them breathe and make sure there wasn't like a gurgly sound happening in their throat and nose or anything like that so quick little suction in the nostrils in the mouth hear them cry make a noise something we know they're good and then they can go on to feeding with mama and we help them latch on if they need to so they can eat but that didn't I mean they pretty much knew how to do that so <laughs> everybody was good in that department oh the other thing you're gonna want to write down in your notebook are any identifiable marks very very important especially if your puppies kind of look alike and all our puppies are kind of black but some of them have like some tan markings and then they've got like shots of white hair randomly here and there. So it helps, especially when your puppies on toy breeds, they're so little, like those little ID collars, I didn't even bother getting them in the whelping kit because I knew they were gonna be too little for these little babies. I mean, too big for these little babies. I just know that from experience because it took Millie, when we got her as a little puppy, it took her forever to be able to wear a regular little dog collar and that's an extra small size, it took her forever. We were trying to, I was trying to find her collars everywhere, collars, harnesses, extra, extra small. I was getting kitten harnesses. I was trying everything because everything was too big for her. So toy breeds, you just got to shop in special places. Etsy is your friend, Etsy is your friend. <laughs> you will find some things that will help you with Etsy. If you ever just need help finding like little tiny enough harnesses, Look for like teacup sizes, teacup harnesses are helpful, toy breed teacup. Look for like chihuahua, <laughs> chihuahua size harnesses and, and collars and things. And you might have to go the kitten route. We definitely did with the little bell because they're so little, it kind of helps to know where they are. Those are good routes to go, so yeah. But I didn't do the ID collars at first. I had gotten this yarn because my idea was we're gonna tie these little ribbons around them little yarn ribbons and that will help. So I had ribbons on them at first, but honestly, one lady was like, it's gonna be a choking hazard. And you know, like one night they slept in it, nobody woke up looking like they were choking to death. Seemed fine, but the issue is, is that they can easily get untied. So rather than it, the opposite issue of it being all tied on their neck and it's choking them, they basically fell off. <laughs> so whether it was because they were crawling around to get to mom and they were stepping on it was pulling it off or mom was pulling it off I don't know but after a couple nights of that I was like forget these ribbons you know <laughs> we basically use them I basically use them for photos 
because they're cute, beautiful ribbons, fluffy yarn, and they just look so adorable on them. But I basically didn't use, I basically stopped using them after a while. And that's why the identifiable markings help so much because certain markings like Venti, I know, has that little stripe down his forehead. Nitro, we call him Michael Jackson because one of his paws is a glove, like an all white glove. The girls are the only ones with tan legs, like a silky terrier has tan legs, but Crema has an all white mouth, so half her face is white by her mouth. And Hazel only has a little white right here. Uh, so that's how you tell them apart, Crema and Hazel. They're very, very close looking. The boys are very, very close looking, but Nitro and Venti you can tell apart because of, again, that forehead and the glove. Otherwise, they pretty much look exactly the same. And the other third boy is all black, minus this little reverse goatee of white right here. He's got a little tuft of white hair here, so cute. He's a debonair espresso. So espresso is very easy to tell apart, but it took a little while because they're very little. That hair took a while to fill out and fill in and become fluffier. When they're born, they're very smooth, slick down. They have hair, but it's very fine, tight to the body. It's not big and fluffy yet. So the markings are so tiny and yeah, it takes a little while to get to know who's who. So if you've got the kind of puppy litter that's very indistinguishable, you can't really tell, you really need some kind of system. I've seen people do like different colored nail polish, non-toxic nail polish on their booties, you know, on the bottoms. Kind of get that because you don't really bathe the puppies. You just kind of wipe them gently with little warm rags and dry them gently. But um, I didn't like the tail nail polish stuff on the puppies. I just didn't like that. But some people do that and you know if the whelping collar sizes work for you great 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 didn't work for us i knew it wasn't gonna work for us would they work now now that their necks are like six inches there's probably some collar i could get that's like six inches probably I'm gonna look into that <laughs> okay and the final other thing in this process is caring for mom so the other thing to know is calcium so you don't really give dogs calcium from what I've learned and you guys can put this in the comments below if you have any experience in all this and you have comments to weigh in on. But from what I learned so far, you don't give dogs calcium prior to whelping because it can actually hinder their own lactation process. So you want to wait, but actually on the labor delivery day, you can start giving them calcium. And that's a piece that I missed because I didn't realize that we, that was when we started giving it to her. I thought it you know, potentially comes later. She was having issues producing milk, so I was kind of holding off on it. But she really needed it that day, and I could tell because she was starting to do some weird stuff, like doing more nesting behavior under our bed and like looking like her nose was itchy and doing a lot of crazy digging, digging, digging in the carpet. And the more I looked into it, the more it sounded like symptoms of potentially um, eclampsia which has to do with low low calcium in her body so I was looking around I did not have a calcium supplement yet and it was on a like a nighttime thing where a vet wasn't available I would have had to call an emergency vet and all that kind of stuff and so I just was reading about it looking it up and um, it basically said until so I went online and found like a calcium supplement I could get her but it wouldn't get here in time for that day so then as you're waiting on your calcium supplement to get there if you're in that same position you can try things like cottage cheese or dairy products anything that's got calcium in it that we eat cheese all that so i tried giving her stuff like that <laughs> tums was another thing i saw someone say you could like give them a half a tablet of tums all that i ordered it all and then by the time it all came she didn't need it anymore but I was giving her those calcium supplements and all that behavior stopped immediately. So if you're pregnant or new mom is acting a little crazy like that and weird like itching and scratching the carpet a lot and just not herself, could be a calcium, could be a calcium issue. So look into that, but definitely have some calcium supplements on standby. We got something I believe is called Oracal. It's just a powder and so I just mix it with a little water. It's not easy to mix into water, so you gotta like whip it for quite some time. So you whip it up, and she ate that like it was candy. Like, I need more. She just ate it all up. So I was like, oh yeah, she needed this. Yeah. 
and then I was sticking it in her food and all that and so that made it yummy for her all right my dears that is it we had a wonderful whelping process I really was so grateful that it all went fine my hubby ended up coming back just in time from the conference to see our very last puppy who is Miss Crema who is already spoken for uh, Miss Crema be born he actually finally got to witness that and he was looking at um all this through facetime i think i whatsapp videoed him <laughs> i was like please don't wreck and drive while you're trying to look at these puppies <laughs> i didn't say that on camera but he was trying to look at these like while he's driving i'm like please don't do it please don't look if you're like in like heavy traffic and all this stuff but he just had it up and was like glancing at it here and there but i'm glad he could kind of see it as it was happening and then he finally arrived for the very very last one which i think was born at like 10 30 or something at night um on october 29th so they all had the same birth date all five puppies born on the same day all healthy all alive every single one of them nobody was sick nobody had issues thank you jesus a wonderful safe whelping experience if your dog is pregnant, that's exactly what I hope for you. What questions do you have? Leave them in the comments below. Or if you just have comments, ideas, things we could do better next time, if there is a next time, <laughs> please leave them in the comments below. I love to hear your take on all this. I am by no means a super expert. I simply have learned quite a lot in this process and wanted to pass on the little bit that I know. And I know there is so much more to know. So if you've got tips and things you want to share, I definitely want to hear them. Leave them in the comments. If this is your first time here, please consider subscribing. It is Silky Malty. This is our YouTube channel. So hit the subscribe button and then also hit the notifications bell so that you can get notifications of these upcoming videos and you don't miss them when they come out. Also, be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. You can follow my little Millie's account. Where is Millie? Oh. Hold on. He's so sweet. He's so sweet. Oh, he's so cute. So you can follow Mama's account at the Silkiest Millie. V T H E Silkiest Millie. M I L L I E on Facebook and Instagram. And that's it, cutie pies. We will see you next time. Have a perfect. Off it.